Well, good evening, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. So glad to see you. So we have a special edition of our our Facebook Live series that we've been doing with, and tonight we have a special author, author and photographer interview. Um, Kathy Eckhouse is a dear friend of ours. She's a weaver as well, and she's also the one behind the lens who does all the photography for Tom's book. So thank you Yay. for being here, Kathy. Yeah. Tom, maybe you should start us off and tell us a little bit how you first met Kathy. Oh my gosh. Kathy came to one of our beginning weaving classes at Manning's Hand Weaving School. Kathy, what do you think? 20 years ago? Maybe. Yeah. 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 Maybe. maybe. Yeah. And she was an instant success. <laughs> yes. And became good friends right away. And, um, well... I could always rely on Kathy and say, oh, you know what? Uh, another mutual friend came to me and said, you know what? We think you need to write a book. And so I thought, oh, my gosh, okay. So uh, who can I rely on, like, little minions that are going to help me cr create all the rugs for this rug book? Right. And so I went to Kathy, and, and you graciously said, I'll do that. Sure. I can do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, of course, as being a great photographer she is, she also contributed a lot of photos for that book as well. So that was nice. that was the yeah. rag rug book, your first book. My very first book. And my rug's on the cover. That's yes, exactly that's right. right. That's right. That's right. But yeah. in the process of warping the loom, I made an error. Yeah. A big error. But it really would have been a fine rug. And I called Tom and I told him what he did what I did and he said, Well you know, you can just read <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I wanted, him, to it, you know. I wanted him to say, yeah. it's fine, we'll just change the draft, but no, he right. didn't. Yeah. So it was a good learning experience. It That's was. exactly right, yeah. yeah. So I, I sort of had this brainstorm with Tom a few months ago, and I said, we have some big stuff coming up here in the next few months with you releasing two new books. Susan Kessler-Simpson also has a new book coming out, so we're going to be doing a whole bunch of these type of small interviews and for me I had a high level of curiosity of what it was like to be the photographer around producing some mm -hmm. of these publications and there's a whole process that goes into putting an instructional book together compared to if you're writing a novel there's a, a lot to learn I learned a, lot. a lot yeah so. so the first book that the two of you paired up to do Kathy you shared a story with me one time about Deb asking you to photograph the baby blanket book. Do you remember that story that you shared with well, me? Well, it actually started before that because the editor needed some more craft books. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I got this idea. Well, when I come to classes, a lot of times there are people that they have grandchildren or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were always asking me, did I ever weave a baby blanket? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. I had one draft right. that I did. All my baby yes. blankets were exactly the same. So I went to Tom and I said, you should write a baby blanket book. And I'm I, thinking about the demographics <laughs> of all the grannies yeah. that are coming to the studio. That's right. But I said, and I'll take some of the photos because I teach preschool music. So that's exactly mm -hmm. right. I have all these kids eight eight months through kindergarten. She's, I have classes. access to kids. We can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's I'll do the song that we just introduced. Yeah, that's to. right. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> I'll do some of the photos. But the editor said, no, you'll do all the, you should do all of the photos. Yeah. It it took a year of my life to do this because you can't you can't take kids' photos in one, one no no one take and you know what? I have some excerpts from the book that I think are just so wonderful to share so that you have an opportunity to talk about what it's like to work with actual live subjects and in this case we're talking about babies and toddlers which I I would find challenging how, how was it for you well this one was easy because obviously she's sleeping but. Uh, <laughs> She's sleeping because I was taking care of her because that's my granddaughter. Oh, my gosh. And, and the, the one blanket in there with the Chinese theme was I was in, in the class when we had already decided to do the book. When I got the call that we were going to have a baby, I said, Tom, you need to design a baby blanket for my Asian, part Asian granddaughter. Yes. And so he did. So that was very special. But I didn't use, well, I did, actually, I did use her for that baby blanket, yeah. too. Yeah. But look at this one. So oh, no. sweet. So sleeping babies are easy. It was good timing for this photo yeah. shoot. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's another one here that I personally think these photographs <coughs> are so fantastic because she looks so angelic, but there's some backstory <laughs> here. Yes, well, she was one of the more difficult. So 
um, there's a park nearby, and we decided that we'd meet in the park, so her mama brought her. But, you know, the thing about it is I wove that baby blanket, but it wasn't her blanket, so she didn't want it. So she uh-huh. threw it down and ran away. And Sure. So we gave up after the first day. <laughs> so then we decided to come again and meet in the same park. Her mother yeah. hadn't given up yet. and uh, But this time she, they brought Daddy along. Daddy decided that giving her a stick would be a good idea because that would distract her. Sure. Like, I don't want her to have a stick. Um, she needs to love this blanket. <laughs> That's what I need her to do. <laughs> they tried They tried to bribe her with M&Ms. Then she had chocolate dripping down her. Yeah. Okay, we gave up. So finally, the third time. So in the final picture, which is the one on the left, that's the one sure. that got chosen for the page of yeah. her blanket. Um, Mama was holding that blanket on the tree. And oh. Mama had said, here, wrap your blanket around the tree. And she finally laughed and had a cute picture. And then when we were all done, my blanket, my blanket. Oh. Mama was saying, this is your blanket. She had seen the blanket three yes. times. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and she wanted it. It was her consolation prize. She wanted yeah. so good. Uh, yeah. But um, I, w- I just wanted to add, the thing about being uh, the photographer and if you w- wove in the blanket – that's the actual yarn that was in that blanket. Yes. And, of course, I can get this fabulous photograph of the yarn. Sure. Because we weavers, we can't get too much looking at yarn. We're enticed just by the cones. <laughs> yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> this is such a precious photo. I mean, really, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, well, this was um, this was a christening blanket, and that is also my granddaughter. And I'm thinking there were... There were at least three adults to take that picture. <laughs> um, so, oh no, there were four of us. There were four of us. So she's sitting on her daddy's lap. He's holding the one hand up by her mouth. We had put a, a toy in that hand because <laughs> she wanted to put the cross in her mouth. Sure. So he's holding that hand down. And then I forget what. It, it just, it was a really, really, really tough picture because she so wanted four to scenes, eat the cross. <laughs> four the pose that you wanted probably worked against you versus <laughs> exactly. letting it organically happen. Exactly. Yeah. But we did it. She didn't cry. Yeah. These are identical twins. Um, it took three three tries for them, too. <laughs> um, we tried, the first we thought, the grandmother, she's a friend of mine, and, and um, we thought, well, we could take them when they're sleeping. So she would text me, okay, they're sleeping. The first time it it just, there was no picture was good. Yeah. The second time that, so they had gone to sleep with their own blankets. Mm-hmm. Then I cover them with these blankets and the grandmother's just dying <laughs> with all the, <laughs> the heat and all. So we went to the yard. This was another day. This again was the third day. And the grandmother had that lovely wooden wheelbarrow. Yes. Oh, let's put them in the wheelbarrow. Well, they started <laughs> screaming. <laughs> so we finally, I mean, happening. this is the best picture we could yeah. get. And it's very cute. But This is a great layout in the book, too, because it's actually a spread over two pages. So you get a nice spread yeah. of the blanket and a little sampling of and what I the original colors And I made that blanket, were. so there's the yarn. It was just beautiful. <laughs> now, you were lucky enough to have your granddaughter pose in the book, but the timing was just right, too, that... My daughter, Windsor, had also been born during the actual writing of the book. And I just love this chubby little foot Me poking too. through. Oh, my gosh. So they were, they were sitting on the steps. And um, Tom said something about, oh, we got to do what? I said, no, no, no. I'm just on the foot. Don't worry. You're, it's fine. It's fine. This is all I was taking. Yeah. He, I think he was worried she wasn't looking or something yeah. like that. But, but um, she was at that, like, perfect plump so age. Cute. Right. <laughs> so yep. this... The, so uh, it was Aunt um, Olivia yes. was behind me doing somersaults and jumping jacks <laughs> and all kinds of things. And she's the one who gave her the dandelions. Oh. And so Windsor was like pulling petals off. I mean, it was perfect. Yeah. So then when I took a picture of the yarn, now I actually did not weave that blanket, but I mm-hmm. said, can I have that yarn? And I found some dandelions I put with the picture. That's so, beautiful. Yeah, it was so yeah. wonderful. The gorgeous blanket. Yeah. Now, I think that each of the blankets had their own personality. And there was some wonderful behind-the-scene things that you can't see. But this this particular picture, I think, was the most shocking to Tom and I. Tom, you <laughs> especially, since you were so intimately involved. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah. well first we'll start with... So he had a christening blanket in, and I said, mm-hmm. okay, we need, if we're going to have one religion, we've got to at least have one more. So we decided to do a, a Jewish blanket, which 
those the symbols on there say Moisha, which is my husband's Jewish name. Uh-huh. <laughs> so and then another friend had that little the the star the of David. The David, was, yes. Yeah. And so we took this picture and this was the easiest baby I've ever taken a picture <laughs> of. This baby slept through the entire thing. Yes. Wherever we put him, he stayed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he's not real. <laughs> <laughs> and what I love about this is Kathy told us after the book had already been published, it was in our hands. And she said, did you know that this baby is not <laughs> is not alive? Well, you even brought this this doll to a Thai restaurant That's to right. celebrate yeah. this. And the waitress was just shocked. That, you know, was like, I can't believe you just leave the baby there on the seat. And yeah. then they, they go, oh, it's not real. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. Well, well, it's but so it's so real. precious to like to go through that whole experience yeah. and we're completely duped. Like, well, my, ne- my niece's little girl is in the book. And the <laughs> grandmother, my my sister-in-law, was looking through the book. When she came to that one, she says, is that Luke? I'm like, <laughs> no. No. Look no. again. That's look again. Even a real it baby. is. It does look pretty realistic. But, but, Kathy, yeah. I have to tell you, I point that out. I know that page, and you, uh, you look at this. Would you believe <laughs> right. it? And everybody goes, oh, isn't he cute? Yeah, isn't he adorable? Oh, he really really is adorable. Rosy cheeks, yeah. yeah. A, friend yeah. Of mine, a friend of mine owns that doll, and she had offered him as a model, and I said, oh, I can't do that. And then later I thought, well, why can't I? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. Now, the last one I wanted to share with you guys from the, the back cover of the book, this is sort of like, a wonderful photo to show the range of styles that this book offered. <clears throat> well, I have more to say about this book. <laughs> so I asked all these families to bring their children. And my my idea was they'd all be standing behind the blankets and then maybe they'd pop up and say, Pick sure, or something like yeah. that. Well, of course, they were all running around and running around. Oh, my goodness. They So we worked so hard to get them all in the picture. Behind the fence, there are two grandmothers holding up those two little ones. And their white hair was showing above the blankets. <laughs> so I had to use my editing program and get all of their white hair out. Yeah. But so this picture really wasn't a great photo of much of anything. But I said to the editors, please, please put this in because the families went to so, it so hard. Trouble. I think it has enough of a candid nature to it <laughs> that it looks like they could all just be gathering around. But oh. I do love this sort of like, it almost reminds me of like prayer flags being yeah. sort of laid out there. Well, the, kid, the kid on the left was ripping them off and like, you know, these <sighs> these aren't my blankets either. I don't want them to have snags yeah, in them. Yeah, yeah. Now I have to say like for that being the first book that you did with Tom, yeah. you had all live models that basically you were doing with the exception of the one baby. But the next book that came along for you guys was the Huck book, and you had a chance to work with some adult figures, correct? What was sort of your, what was your differences in working with adults? Well, adults, of course, are a lot easier, mm-hmm. a lot easier, but they really are different, and I picked these two photos, and they're both from the Huck book, to, because these two women are just very different as far as their modeling. The one on the left was a much more insecure and hesitant, and I sort of had to say, well, put your hand there, do this, or this, or that. And the reason I chose her is her little girl is also in that book. Oh, um, So okay. it's just easier, you know, mm-hmm. sure. two, two models at the same time. Yeah. But the woman on the right, you can't put anything on her that she doesn't make it look good. Well, for one thing, like the one on the left, a lot and a lot of the models, I have to fix the scarf, you know. I have sure. to put but the one on it, she just does it. She's just an odd. She was very natural yeah, about just, the whole process. It's just easier for her. And I think some of that is just your own self-confidence. Absolutely. And, yeah. But I like to pick a lot of diversity. That's important to me. So I have older models, young models, women, uh, men, um, children. Like a, like, real, like, yeah. a real, like real people. people. Now, Kathy, yeah. both of those models that uh, were in that photograph sure. are wearing black. Did you ask them no or was they, that by chance no they all I always tell them what I'm bringing and I tell them I, I you can't wear something with words on it you can't um mm-hmm. so no stripes no Hawaiian yeah shirts, no things stripes like that yeah. yeah 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 that makes sense yeah yeah now we went through this whole process we've got some live action stuff and the very next book you do it's all focused on table linens it's pretty right. straightforward were you excited about this new sort of way of approaching the photography I just process? knew it would be so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you sat down at the beginning of the planning process with the publishers, did they have specific ideas of what they wanted to see? Or did you were you able to sort of make your own so, decisions? I don't think so. I think mm-hmm. that 
I think I know what we want to see. Yeah. Because I'm a weaver. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to see the final product, but I also want to see the weave structure. So for everything I take, I always take, you know, something in a setting that will make you say, oh, I want to make those. And then... Or sort of envision it, like, on their own table. Yeah. 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 I love that you picked... Pretty humble cookware. I mean, the Fiesta ware made perfect sense for the stylization. Well, I think this. this one was called Fiesta. I think you're it right was. as well. Yeah. 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 So some of it. So go back one. Go sure. Back the, Absolutely. So many of them, Tom, for this book, Tom didn't name. I guess this is an example. But I did want to say about the one on the left. I'm just very proud of that photo because it was just napkins for very simple mm-hmm. but elegant napkins. And I thought, how in the world am I going to? photograph these so I went on YouTube to learn napkin folding <laughs> and <laughs> oh you're kidding no <laughs> and and I picked a, a fold that I thought was very suitable you can go on oh sure, well I was absolutely. Say about the, the one with um them all lined up like that yes that could take that can take like an hour to get them just right oh I'm sure because you have to have the colors beside each other sure and so these are usually just eye candy that the editor needs to throw in where yeah. there's a space absolutely but give you sort of an idea of what yep. the whole collection is going to look like it takes a long time yeah <laughs> this one i didn't own any fiesta wear so this is what i say when they name the it and then you have to find something mm-hmm. right so a friend of mine we went up to her sister's house she had the key mm-hmm. we went in and we just raided her sister's so that soup came out of the refrigerator. It no is, way. It it is, you <laughs> took her sister's soup, too? <laughs> it isn't hot, but we took it out of the refrigerator. It looks, it looks wonderful. I love it. it. I did that. notice there was no steam coming off the coffee. Did you really? Oh. It might have fogged the camera, so that's probably a good yes. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we should have heated it up. But anyway, yeah, we had okay. a lot of fun doing that. Beautiful. This one, Tom, so... Tom says, well, we got to go to somebody's house to do these pictures. And I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm kind of shy and introvert. Um, and in fact, Tom said we were friends right away. No, no, we weren't. I was always scared of him because he was this master weaver. And, sure. <laughs> and I used to get really nervous. And so, oh, my gosh, we're going to go to this house. Oh, what if I can't do it? Oh, I don't know. You know, because the lighting, I was used to doing them at my house. Yeah. So we get there. And these people are really, really, really nice. And the other great thing about that is that Tom's there. So I can show him in the camera what the pictures look like. Right. Does he like them? Well, it wasn't this picture. It was one of the other ones. But um, the, the, I, I needed a stool. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if you remember this. The owner, he says, well, I have a stool. And he had one of those stools that you have in the bathroom to put your knees up high so yeah. you're in the right position when oh, you're, yeah. you're sitting on your toes. I think they call it a squatty a potty. A squatty <laughs> potty. <laughs> so he brought that out. So by the end, I was perfectly fine. Fine. Because I did get good pictures there. I really did. I thought that picture was beautiful. Yeah. Um, Tom designed those weavings for that family and their their table and their... Yes. their um, yeah. But typically, they have a set of Windsor chairs around that table. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just so happened that that particular chair was in their living room, and we looked at the color. And it was perfect. It was yep. absolutely yeah. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's a stunning yeah. photo. Yeah. It was also just the perfect lighting. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good well on that, you don't know when you're in somebody else's house. Yeah. So I just threw in some extra just to show that. You know, we we weavers like to look at baskets. Full absolutely. Of and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and so I. I Always add a bunch of eye candy for the editors to sure. put wherever they want. Yeah, I mean, I have baskets of yarn just sitting around my house. Yeah, because we like to look at it. Yeah, it's, it, that's exactly right. It's eye candy. Now, the last book that you guys have just partnered with, mm-hmm. the most recent one, hasn't been released yet. It's actually coming out November 1st, is Spinning 101. Now, Kathy, I was so interested for you to share with folks what it was like to photograph a book as a non-spinner. Was that something that you were intimidated by or do you felt comfortable that you could sort of just find the right angle, find just the right imagery that would convey to a total beginner what they needed to know? Well, it, it in one way it was hard because I didn't know, Yeah. but it was easy because I had the master here to say. <laughs> right there. Well, so sometimes, you know, he'd be doing something with his hands and I'd yeah. say, now what are we trying to see here? Right. And then he'd have to tell me. 
and sometimes like for that, yes. you know, well, where on this length of fiber, fiber. do you want me to, to, to focus? Sure. And he would have to tell me and explain, this is what we're trying to show. Right. I, I sort of imagined myself that through the photography process, you learned a whole lot about spinning yourself. Uh, I think I'm still pretty befuddled. <laughs> You're still pretty befuddled. <laughs> still yeah. still pretty befuddled. Yeah. I mean, I just love this picture because I, as a spinning teacher, Tom and I both teach spinning yeah. classes. The intimacy of this photograph is priceless. It's very hard to get your students up around your wheel during a class where they have this vantage point. And I think mm -hmm. it's just a really, really beautiful shot. And I like that the whole black background is sort of darkened and really brings us into the foreground. It, it, it's true. You can mm -hmm. see the twist in the thread mm -hmm. in front of my fingers mm -hmm. where you are also able to catch just that unspun fiber behind sure. my right. fingers. Yeah, and that's such an you know important part of of the whole spinning the process. teaching process. And you mm -hmm. you did it, Kathy. Yeah, I yep. love that photo. This is another photograph that I was really impressed with. We talk about the anatomy of a loom, or excuse me, a wheel, quite a lot mm -hmm. during our time, because it's important to know in the spinning process what the different parts of the wheel do and what their function is. And this is a great sort of detailed shot of. A double drive system where a person might be riding one end over the bobbin and one over the whirl. It's perfectly captured. Mm -hmm. I did what he told me to yeah, do. <laughs> no, it was just wonderful. And I, I mean, but there could I have been know. way more information there than that was really necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what was this one taken for? Do you remember? Eye candy. Eye Only candy. Eye candy. Yep. Yeah. This was um, hand spun by a student of Tom's. Uh -huh. I was down here and she was weaving a rug or a blanket. A double weave blanket. Double That's weave right. Blanket. Yeah. That's Out right. That. Yes. You yeah. know what? I think I have another shot of some of that yarn. Um, yes. Here is, I think, was that some more of the blanket actually, yarn? That, that I don't think so. Some of that mine. was some of yours. Yeah. You know what? I do love about this, though. This is not the type of yarn that as a beginner, if you saw this photograph, you would be intimidated to take up spinning. Right. A lot of our beginners, they sort of have up on a pedestal what commercial yarn looks like, and that is their first objective yes. to model the, their their spinning after. And this mm -hmm. looks like made by hand. Mm -hmm. Well, does. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but I, if you get the book, I think it has a picture of the finished or on the loom. I don't know if they put that picture in. The they blanket. Oh, they did no. not. Unfortunately, okay. they didn't include that. Too. Okay. Um, Never mind. Buy the book anyway. That's okay. <laughs> Now, Dad, part of the book, you were including drop spindling in addition yeah. mm -hmm. to spinning wheels. Yeah. And you'll probably recognize a lot of these photos were actually done in this room that we're, we're broadcasting from. So that's the process behind. But, uh, you know, Kathy, again, I, I wore that dark blue shirt so you could specifically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see that spindle going and that thread happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Really got that. Tracy wanted to know if you had gotten a manicure for that particular photo <laughs> we found earlier. No, I, I didn't, Tracy, but you know what? Thank you for asking that. I did not chew my fingernails back. <laughs> that's what weeks. I said. I said, nope, fit them back nice and neat. <laughs> because that's typically how we manicure around we here. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's get back on track. So this photo, I think, is just super beautiful. That Was it your choice of color mm -mm. to throw on there? No, I don't think so. No. It, was, it was Tom. I really wanted that to be. Mm -hmm. Hot pink, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. For any of you who are not spinners at home, this is a piece of equipment that is not commonly used, but for people who process a lot of fiber, this is a really efficient way of organizing the fiber so you can prepare it before spinning. So it's nice and combed out and organized, called a drum carter. Um, but the hot pink one here is very enticing. I, I want to pull that off and, and spin some up. Uh, Lazy Kate, this is a nice composition, too, to show mm -hmm. versatility and equipment. Well, it took a while to get the background of that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's beautiful fabric. Is that one of our blankets? It's actually one of our blankets. Yes, so I thought so. we just laid it onto a table, and uh -huh. I think I was behind it holding it mm -hmm. up. And yep. so it just gives you that Because nice I think initially we were trying to take it on the table, and it just didn't That's work. right. Yeah. yeah, these are some, the, it's a beautiful backdrop for that sort of warm yarn that's on the bottoms there. Tell us about this photo. This was after washing it, right? It was. Yeah. yeah. It was freshly yeah. washed yeah. and scoured and put onto a yep. sweater rack. 
Yep, and we to went dry. outside. And right out here mm -hmm. on, on Sarah and on Dustin's the patio. patio. On the deck. Whatever. That's what's so great about the book. You guys photograph things not in a very controlled studio setting, but you photographed it as if the home spinner would do. And a lot of them take advantage of open air and solar power oh, to, yeah. to, to dry their faces that we've done for hundreds of years. And I'm glad that you brought that into the photography because it feels like you could be at home. Yeah, you we can were. Do this. We were at my home. You can yes. Do this. <laughs> oh, what a day! This and there's was, Kathy. where it started. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was a windy day that day, and uh, the sheep weren't in a pen. I thought they would be. I thought maybe Tom would be holding them, but no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, they were so cute though. So. That was probably one out of a hundred pictures where we were. I think it was a February day, wasn't it? It was early in the year. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, what's harder, take photographs of lambs or children? Oh, oh. good question. <laughs> <laughs> Although some of those I kids had three photo shoots. So yeah. maybe I know the mm -hmm. answer. I, I really think they're pretty, pretty equal. But the gentleman who owns these sheep, I mean, he took us out into the field in a, in a pickup truck and, yeah. and yeah. got us out there and mm -hmm. trying to chase up these little lambs and bring them in and... And your Imogen is oh. out there with a little bucket of, of, of corn oh trying my to get them. Gosh, to come in and, you know what? I think that I actually have a picture of her somewhere in here where there. she's trying to feed them there. and yeah, trying, to, trying get to get them in. Them. <clears throat> this is just such a beautiful shot because, it, I mean, well, when you take your kid to the farm, they're in total wonder. Mm -hmm. of, there were babies. so many. Oh. She, she was just so happy. But while well, you got that picture of Tom up there, it was a windy day. So his hair all blew up, you know. <laughs> so I have an editing program, and I actually was really proud of how well I did that. But I think in the book, mm -hmm. they cropped you even more. Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, they really? Might, yeah. They might have cropped it off, but I thought it turned out really great. It's a great picture with yeah. him and the lamb. She had such a good day. One of the things that I love about the publishers that you guys work with is that the imagery is really the main focus. Mm -hmm. And I love that most of the layouts, as you see in this example, the idea is to bring to life the imagery in front of you with very little wording around it. And this is a nice example of that. So this, I guess, was one of the examples you guys were showing in the book. You'll mm -hmm. have to recap me on this. Yeah, this is a Norman Hall wheel, mm -hmm. and uh, it was taken on our deck at home. But I really wanted to show people that there's all different kinds of spinning wheels out here. Right. And the circumference of that wheel is actually, um, or excuse me, the diameter, not the circumference. The diameter is um, 30 inches across. Wow. So it's very slow treadling on that mm. wheel because it just makes the flyer, uh, what's well, a production wheel. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So, um, very efficient wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and beautiful to look at. Norman Hall builds each oh, one of excuse the, me. He only builds like 12, 13, 14 wheels a year. Sure. Yeah. And so when you get on his waiting list, yeah. um, sometimes it's a five-year waiting Well, you even time. think about that. Like yeah. woodworking, you think of production. But even sure. if he's doing 12 a year, that means one a month. That's right. The amount of craftsmanship that goes into those wheels, it's still kind of inspiring it's, to me that it's he could oh, do I didn't know any of that, but that yeah. wood is so beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. So I did take Gorgeous. some close-ups. I hope some of those got in the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, this was some of the finished skeins that you had features, just like sort of some eye candy. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is another great shot, sort of like your drafting photo, that sometimes is hard to get across to people when we talk about using a Viking comb and creating sliver. But this is just beautiful to show how you take all that fluff and transform it into these uniform sort of easy to spin um, prepared fibers. Yeah. Uh, Arlene says, I'm signing up for beginning spinning soon. <laughs> good, good. Now this this one did. Why were you sort of thinking this was a good angle for folks to see? Well, this is uh, clearly made by Louet in Holland, and it's a different style of spinning wheel. So we were talking about double drives where you got that beautiful photograph of the two um, drive bands on there. Then there is a uh, scotch tension, but Louet for many years used what they call an Irish tension, mm -hmm. and the speed of the flyer is controlled with a leather belt that goes over the flyer in the front. And Kathy, you were able to capture that so well, as well as the uh, little tension adjustment sure. on the side. Mm -hmm. so, um, good, yeah, shot. A good shot. Good shot. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. It's important to remember that. But, you know, like when we're talking to people, too, I mean, they see the spinning wheel in front of them, but if mm -hmm. they're sitting six or seven feet away, 
They mm -hmm. can't see that. Yes. And you were able to get right in there with the camera and, mm -hmm. and get that photo. I also like that everything is in focus that needs to be focused. Mm -hmm. Everything extraneous is gone. That's wonderful. Well, Kathy often took like five shots of that. You're kidding. So no. and with, so then we would say, what do you think? What do you think? So yeah. I, So when you guys were working back and forth, did you find because it was the third book, you were pretty much able to just communicate what you needed for each chapter? Did you have sort of a list uh, ahead of time of what oh, needed to be covered? Work more intimately. Yeah. Because of what <clears throat> no, for other for every other book, I had projects. Mm -hmm. Project had a name. I was on my own, figured it out. Sure. This he had a sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, and he would come. Okay, today we're taking this, 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 this. I don't know what it is, but yes. this, this, and this. So yeah. he'd say, here, we're doing this, and this is what we need to see. Sort of how you approach, like, a filming with Interweave, where you have a, you yeah. have a sort of a set of, these are these are topics I plan to write about with my written word. Right. This is what I need you to bring to life. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that yeah. works very efficiently. So I'm often sitting there at the computer, mm -hmm. and I'm typing in and saying, okay, now, oh, photo. And so, for mm -hmm. instance, sure, photo. sure. And I have to go through that again uh -huh. and get, convey it to you and get everything mm -hmm. staged. Whereas yeah. if it's just projects. Now, in addition, there'll be other things, extra mm -hmm. things that I need to get. Right. But for the projects, I'm pretty much on my own. You're pretty much yeah. on your so own. It, but, but we were together, so he could look in the camera and he'd say, that's it. Or no, that's, no, the no. One. Yeah. that's the one. That's the one. So we talked about the Louet. Now, this is one, again, like sometimes we don't get a chance to talk to people about. No. There are very few times in beginner books that an author has time to talk about every minute detail. And with this one, it's just some carpet warp, you know, some highly no. spun cotton. But, Kathy, you're giving people an intimate look into what it's like to add a leader onto a bobbin here. A very tight, very tight shot. And mm -hmm. I think... I, I'm a person who loves zoomed in shots. Mm -hmm. Only give me the amount of information that I need. Right. Yeah. Well, I can, you know, tell people, and you do the same thing, Sarah, in class, where you're saying, all right, we're going to add a leader onto that bobbin. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at here, folks. But I'm going to add a leader onto this bobbin so your fiber has uh, something to grasp a hold of. Yes, definitely. But just, you know, you're going to pass this loop end underneath the knot end. And Kathy, you got it. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Now, this one we threw in just because we all love some kid and <laughs> little kid candy, but it's, it's so cute. It is so cute, but you can see it was windy that day. Now, we just, ironically, <laughs> we, Susan Bach just put a comment up here that she would like you to talk a little bit about the camera equipment that you use. Ah. Ironically, that was the very <laughs> next slide I had here. And this, for those of you who have not been here to Redstone Glen, uh, Kathy is standing on the kitchen island right here where our students stay or where we <laughs> conduct our spinning classes. Can you want to explain what's happening? All right. Well, photo? first of all, the equipment. I have a, I, sure. I use a Canon, and I shoot in RAW, if you know photography, and then I use Lightroom to edit. But I pretty much always use a tripod because as you get older, sometimes you're not as steady as you used sure. to be. So it's just I want, my, I want everything to be in focus and, mm -hmm. and perfect. But um, at some point, Sarah said, you know, maybe you, you should talk about what it's like to work with Tom. Yes. <laughs> because so. I know intimately what it's like to work with Tom every day. But what was your experience, Kathy? Uh, so we did this during COVID, of course. So, yep. um, so he wanted to show, we were, we're washing the wool, right? You heated we're up. washing the wool. Well, okay. Yeah. So he wanted to have it on a burner thing in, in this pot. And I said, well, can we put the burner thing on the floor? Yeah. Well, no, we couldn't. But I don't know why. I didn't ask. I said, <laughs> okay. But if you want me to take a photo of that, I need to be above it. Yes. So, yeah, he got me a stool, and I got up there, and I did that. Yeah. Um, I think if I'd have been at home, it would have been on the floor. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why. Yeah. Well, no, you don't <laughs> normally cook on the floor. But you cook on the Counter. But the floor wouldn't have been in the photo, but it's okay. I did what I said. Yeah. So the picture on the right. Okay, so I had been down here to a class during COVID, and the rule at Redstone Glen was everybody had to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that Tom's mask just used to slide down below his nose. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we had to get together then, so normally on a, on a regular book, um, I take 
like five or so of each photo and then yeah. we sit and quickly boom 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 well this one they were all out of order so he had to really find the picture that went in the certain sure. place so it took us two evenings i believe yeah. so for two evenings during covid before vaccines oh. i was yeah. gonna have to sit next to this gentleman and i knew that his mask would be sliding down so i sent him this picture and i said now this is what wearing a mask appropriately should look like. Ah! <laughs> I have to switch the camera so you can see how red he is no. turning over here. Yeah. So, no. I be, so we were pretty, we had, we had yeah, one looking, laptop, one yeah, laptop, we're, right? We're going through and it. I look yep. over and there it is. So I'd say, God save the queen. And then he'd pull it up. Pull it up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then eventually it got, God save the queen, you know? <laughs> I'm going to leave. That's She's right. going to leave. Yep. Two weeks, two evenings of that we did. But anyway, it, it was fun. Um, but you're but this, important thing. this was harder because, again, the other ones, it's a project. So right. So you can see that, that certain baby blanket or that sure. certain table in and sure. you can find the picture with no problem. But well, this, and sometimes well, you have to deal with just like the general Tomness, which yes. is, you know, yes. him being himself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, did you have those beside each other? I do. I do have a photo okay. side by side. So, um, Sarah had asked at one point, what, what do the, how do the editors get involved? And, you know, frankly, not too much. They trust us to, to submit the, the right pictures, and normally they don't do anything. I did a book for Susan Kessler Simpson where I had two of my granddaughters in, and they cut one girl's head off, which, you know, it was a scarf. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so you don't need the head, and, no. and, and lots of scarf photos sure. are like that. But I said to the editor, I said, they're sisters. Either you take both heads off, which I was fine with that, yep. or you put the other one back on, and they right. put it back on. But for this book, Tom and I both thought the picture on the left was just perfect. But the editors pointed out the picture on the left shows, if you don't know Tom, well, even if you do, is that a book about spinning wheels? Is that a book about fixing your spinning wheels? Is that a book about how to pick your spinning wheel? Right. So that say what, much. Yeah, what yeah. they chose on the right there is the is so much better. They really were right. They were right. They were right. Because you, you know what? Them. They are it, part of like mm -hmm. a big marketing team too. And so yeah. they know that the cover is yeah. the first impression. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is what's really telling the story of what hopefully will reflect behind yeah. the cover as well. I find covers very difficult for me. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly yeah. what to do, but a, a series of woven things is a little easier for me than this Sure. Part. But sure. I thought this was the one on the left was a great idea, but I can see their point that yeah. it's only because we know Tom. And if you've taken a class from Tom, you know Tom, <laughs> and that is Tom. <laughs> <laughs> through and through. And yeah. he hauled all those spinning wheels out there for right. the photo. Yeah. It wasn't quite as hot as it has been in no, the last true. week. No, that's true. But it was darn near close. Yeah. 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 So I'm interested. I'm sure now that you guys have done four books together, mm -hmm. are you starting to think about future projects coming oh, out? Oh, you bet, Sarah. Yeah. And so for uh, all of you, maybe you do know this, but uh, I'm on to volume two of Weaving Rag Rugs and... Uh, Kathy is going to help out again, not only as a photographer, but as a weaver. Yay, so yay, we're excited yay. about the, the next book. So we're hoping in the fall of 22, 23, excuse 23. me. 23. So the manuscript has to go in by the fall of 22. And that's how long it takes. You know, a lot of you may not be familiar with this, but mm -hmm. it takes a year and then editing. And with all of these books, they... They go through, they put the book together, we get it back, Kathy looks at it, I look at it, make corrections, goes back, it comes back again. So it does this Sometimes, depending on the book, times. it means it goes into the hands of beta testers, mm -hmm. people that know weaving drafts, and they can say, yeah. uh, there's no way you're going to get tabby with that tie-up. But there's still things that get overlooked. There's things that get yeah. overlooked, oh, yeah. and, um, you know, it's just... I think it would be hard, because I'm one of those people that I'll take hundreds of photos to captivate 20 and it must be hard to go to the chopping block and say this it is, is really this favorite one this, this one, one has doesn't. to go yeah. but they just they, i mean it's budget oriented as well they can't oh, print right. thousands yep. of pictures yeah we're always told there's only so much real estate yeah, <laughs> so yeah. There's yeah. not monopoly <laughs> yeah. 
But I just, I really wanted to thank you for being here. You're getting a lot of really wonderful photographs about um, the photos that you've taken for the book. I am going to throw in the comment section a quick link on um, how to pre-register um, excuse me, pre-order the book that is coming out in November. Annie is already taking pre-orders, and I think that we've got a case that is um, spoken for already. And, of course, you know, Tom will go in and sign them if you want to throw your signature on there as well. I think people would appreciate that. But um, <laughs> click the link tonight. that you I just threw spinning. There well. you go. Yeah, there we'll, you go. We'll get the wine. Only um, if you will listen to this uh, that's exactly yeah. right. Only the broadcast. <laughs> so if you look in the comment section, there is a little link there that says Spinning 101, and that will take you directly over to our web page. In fact, um, let me sort of help you guys out, see what that looks like, because i got a web page coming up here. Um, so when you get up to the website here, you will see that there is a... Um, Nice description of the book, and it says taking pre-orders now. So what Annie will do is she'll get you on the list and make sure that then when they are in our hand, you get the first copies to come off because we know that they come fast, <laughs> and they and they are usually out the door pretty fast as well. Yeah. Now, as we sort of wrap up this evening, I have to say thank you. This has been so fun. I mean, I've known Kathy since she taught my kids in music together, but I'm yeah. so glad that even though my kids have graduated beyond it, that we still get to work together. And I would also like to say thank you very much, too, because yeah, you good. have really made my books beautiful. Yes. You're through welcome. Your lens. And what a lot of people don't know is, you know, just how multi-talented you are as well. <laughs> not only do you weave, it's true. not only do it's you true. do this, but you're also a rug hooker. Yeah. I am. So, and yeah. you are actually going to be publishing uh, I a am. Book. I yeah. wrote a book. Yes. Uh, like Tom, I didn't think I could write a book. <laughs> but I wrote a book, yeah. and it'll be out um, next summer. Great. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, everyone is really enjoying it, and we look forward to doing stuff with you guys here in the future. Um, for those of you out here joining us this evening, look for future announcements. We are also going to be having the illustrator from Tom's new uh, children's book, Spinning Tales, coming mm -hmm. out. And she is going to be talking about what it's like to illustrate Tom's books. As well as Susan Kessler Simpson, who has a new Overshot book coming out. She's going to which be spending. Kathy. Which Kathy did the photography for as well. So <laughs> we have a nice little community here that supports each other. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Everyone have a good Take rest of your tonight, evening. Everybody. And we'll see you again very shortly. Goodbye. Goodbye.